What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. Today, we're going to be comparing and contrasting 2311 racing and track house racing today. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. First of all, both organizations have had their own highs and their own lows so far. They both have flashes of brilliance this year, and both of them have had flashes of not being such great organizations this year. But they have been super, somewhat, somewhat competitive so far this year in 2021. And for the fact that both organizations have shown speed at times this year, for especially with being no practice qualifying this year, I think has absolutely been really, really incredible to see for sure. But let's start off with 2311 Racing so far in Bubble Walls. So far, Bubble Walls, who's a driver for 2311 Racing, has zero wins, zero top fives, zero top tens. Has led 46 laps. A lot of those, of course, coming in Martinsville and at Talladega and Daytona as well. He's had one stage win so far and is at a 21.3 average finish so far. Now, let's talk about them. I honestly think that Bubba Wall should have two or three top tens at least so far this year in 2021. I look back at Bristol Dirt where he ran in the top ten but had a mechanical issue after Ricky Sanders Jr. made some contact with him. And basically he got spun out with a flat tire and there was no caution, which they should have thrown a caution because they were throwing cautions for people like Mike Marler. I was very surprised they didn't throw the caution right there. They also running very, very well at Phoenix National Speed, but running almost in the top five, as a matter of fact. But Mike Wheeler made a very, very, very stupid pit road call at the end of the race, bringing, basically keeping him out with around 50 laps to go. He was the only car that basically stayed out at the end of the race and ended up finishing and set up potentially a top five run because that team was looking for their first top five or even their top ten at that point. They basically ended up finishing 17th or 16th in the race, which they honestly should have gotten at least a top 10 for sure, but they showed a lot of speed. Then they go back to Daytona where they were running, and they honestly had a shot to win that race, but unfortunately they had a loose wheel coming to the end of that, and there was really no chance for them to have a chance to basically contend there. And then just recently, or Talladega, they looked like they had one of the cars to beat, but they got some damage early in the race, but really didn't affect them too much. And then Bubba Walls basically's team decided we're going to come down here road. I understand field was a concern. But Mike Wheeler basically has made some really, really bad pit road calls so far. And I think a lot of it, yes, Bubba Walsh is an unproven driver. But I think in a lot of the races where Bubba Walsh has had a lot of speed, they've just not been able to get the finishes they deserve. Now, there's some races definitely coming up for Bubba Walsh. I think that he's going to be better, to be perfectly honest with you. But I think Bubba Walsh has shown at points where he's been good and at times where he hasn't been great. Because there's also been low points as well, like I mentioned. You go back to Vegas where they have mechanical issues in the race. You go back to Homestead where they just had no speed. You go back to Richmond as well, where they absolutely had arguably the slowest car they've had all the year. They basically almost finished outside the top 20, actually almost outside the top 30 in the race. They ran absolutely poor in that race. Of course, there was a pit. They basically got caught a couple laps down, trapped a lap down, because uh, what's his face? Uh, there was Austin Center got into Ryan Newman out there, and it basically got trapped a couple laps down, but he really had no speed and really should have been farther out, to be honest with you. But like I said, I think 2311's had their own flashes of brilliance so far this year. But also have had lack. But there's also been talk behind the scenes about 2311 racing. They want to eventually expand to maybe a two or three car operation. And I think if they were to expand a two or three car operation, I think John Hernandez, Checker, Harrison Burton, or Matty D would definitely be my choice for that. I think if you brought a guy like Harrison, like John Hunter Nemechek, I think he could help Bubba Walls out for sure and make him better. And I also do think another thing, reason that points that why 2311 has struggled so far this year is they don't have their own shop right now. They're, they're, they're currently building their own shop right now, which is going to be in Huntersville, North Carolina. That's where they're basically building right now. They got approved a couple weeks ago. They're basically building out of the Jermaine Racing Shop right now. And again, they got, let's also note that they got their stuff basically in uh basically in January. So they really were not prepared coming into this year. And for the expectations, I would say they've been disappointing for the expectations a lot of people put on with them. But I really didn't honestly have too much real I really didn't have like crazy expectations. I thought he was gonna be a tender for the playoffs, which he still is in contention for the playoffs, by the way, which I'd like to say he on a stage at Talladega and he's led 30 and basically a 74 lap sled like it meant 46 lap sled and he basically has a stage win. So that's one good thing about Bubble Walls, but there's been also low points so far for Bubble Walls as well. The next team we're looking at is Trackhouse Racing. Trackhouse Racing so far has zero wins, but they have one top five and one top ten compared to Bubble Walls this year. That coming at Bristol Dirt. Their run at Bristol Dirt Trackhouses was absolutely impressive. They had one of the cars to be early in the race, end up getting a top five at Bristol Dirt. They were super, super quick in that race, which was really, really surprising to see, considering Daniel Suarez, the driver for that organization, wasn't really had that much experience on dirt racing. As a matter of fact, his first dirt race is literally the week of at a track, I think, in like Charlotte or in North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. He really didn't have that much dirt experience, but Trackhouse brought a lot of speed 
for that race as well. They end up leading 74 laps. I think they led a lot of, like, 60 laps at Bristol. They had one of the cars beat him for Joe Logano into passing him. They really never could get back up there because their long run speed really wasn't there, to be honest with you, once they got to the end of the race. They have zero stage wins so far and a 20.6 average finish so far. I have to say Trackhouse Racing so far, the fact that they have shown so much speed as early as they have for a team that really had no expectations, a lot of people were not expecting them to be as competitive as they've been at points this year. Yes, they are lower in the standings. They have a, they're in 24th in the points right now, but they're they're a little bit right outside of the chance to make it in the plus. They're probably going to have to win a race maybe up at an upcoming track. But I look at Daniel Suarez's track record as some of the upcoming tracks are going to, and I, he's really good at those tracks as well. So I think Daniel Suarez overall has a good shot of contending at those tracks going forward. But I look, like I said, I look at this team and the fact that they've shown speed and, and you know, they've been good at points this year, especially like at Bristol Durant. They had a shot for a top 10 as well. They're, that crew chief, the intertermining Jose Blanco Figueroa, I think that's the guy's name. I could be wrong, but I think that's the guy's name who is basically going to be the, the crew chief because at the time, Travis Mack, who I think is another big reason that that organization has shown some speed because I think Travis Mack is one of the most underrated crew chiefs in the NASCAR Cup Series right now. He really helped Michael Nett improve in the Xfinity Series when he was at Junior Motorsports. And Trackhouse Racing just has been honestly really, really surprising to watch at points this year and really, really good at points this year so far. I, I really like what they've been doing so far with that organization. I think that they're going to have another team that's going to be really successful long-term. I think like 2311 Racing, I think both organizations have a long, bright future ahead of them on our two teams that can bring a lot to them. Both teams also have powerhouses in their organization as well. They have Michael Jordan with 2311 Racing and Denny Hamlin, of course. Denny Hamlin being one of the most the best NASCAR drivers currently in the Cup Series right now, being as dominant as he's been this year. He's shown a lot of promise and speed so far. But you also have the arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, who's also under again, he's not like one of the main owners of that organization as well. But you have Michael Jordan in that organization as well, who basically is bringing a lot of funding. And they've been able to pick up a ton of sponsors this year, five major sponsors to go with that. You've had Dr. Pepper join the organization, McDonald's, uh, DoorDash. Um, did I say Dr. Pepper? I can't remember. Uh, Columbia, and there was another uh, sponsor that basically they picked up this year. So they've had five sponsors be able to go with them. They're fully funded for the 2021 season. So they've been able to bring a lot of funding as well. But Trackhouse Racing also, like I mentioned, does have a lot of funding going for it as well. They've picked up a ton of sponsors this year, including K1 Speed, Pump It Up Party, um, Eris and, and Comscope have been able to sponsor. Coca-Cola has joined with them as well, and they're fully funded as well. And also, you have Pitbull, who's basically a co-owner of this organization, one of the biggest artists and one of the biggest hip-hop artists in the last 15 years, a most popular one, a ton of Grammys as well, a guy that's basically bringing a lot as well, and a guy who also has a school as well, the Slam School, which he basically owns. A lot of people from that school basically been able to design some of the cars, and also their designer as well. Same with 2311. I think their designer is also really good as well, by the way. But their designer they have with track us, Kyle Sykes, is absolutely incredible. That's one thing that you really could give a lot of props to is both Trackhouse and 2311 have been able to bring funding, which for a lot of organizations like Kendrick Motorsports and even organizations like Joe Gibbs Racing, at times, they seem to struggle. The new organizations, though, are bringing a lot of funding. And I think, of course, they're wanting to sponsor those drivers for certain reasons, but I think both have been able to bring funding as well, which really helps those organizations going forward. And they've got big personalities and big people in the team. I mean, like I said, you also have Ty Norris in that organization who's a competition director with that team. You've got a lot of people working right now with both organizations that are helping those organizations. And they've been doing overall, in my opinion, really positive things as well going forward. So now I'm honestly going to tell you who I think has been the better organization so far after 10 races in 2021. Like I said, it's very early in the year, so things can definitely change after 10 races. But in my honest opinion, if you wanted the truth, I am going to give the edge to 2311 Racing so far, but not by much this year. Yes, Trackhouse Racing does have that top five and top ten edge this year, and they have shown a lot of good promise so far as well. But Trackhouse Racing at points has also been worse than 2311 Racing at times this year as well. But I will give Trackhouse a lot of props. Like I mentioned, they have shown a lot of promise and a lot of speed to start this year. 2311 Racing, while the finishes have not really shown for it, they have shown more speed at points this year. Like I mentioned, they've been really good at a lot of tracks. They've been, they were really good at Bristol Dirt. They were really good at Phoenix. They were really good at Speedways and Daytona 500. They were really, really good at this weekend at Talladega, but they've not been able to get the finishes for that. Yes, you can make our same, but they've got to execute the races, and that's absolutely true. But I look at the organization that's had more speed, and I think that 
right now 2311 should have more top fives and more top tens than track house racing if they got the finishes they deserve they would right now be in the playoffs right now because they're like i said they're only 33 points back could you imagine those 33 points they would gain you know i think that in my opinion 2311 racing is a little bit better than track house right now again i think like i said both organizations have shown it but in my personal and honest and sincere opinion I think so far in 2021, I've got to give the edge to 2311 Racing. Again, things can definitely change. I think both are going to have a shot of making the playoffs this year. But in my honest opinion, I have to give the edge to 2311 Racing. That is just my honest opinion on that. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's special NASCAR video. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Notifications so you'll be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my patrons while well. in schedule below that and comment your thoughts on this video. Which organization do you think has been better? Do you think 2311 Racing has been better, or do you think Trackhouse Racing has been a better organization? Let me know in the comments below. Later tonight, we're going to have another video. We're going to be talking about the Truck Series race when that concludes. The Truck Series race is all the same. So you're going to get two videos this afternoon. You're going to see some really, really good content on that as well. And I will be talking about the Truck Series race here later this evening. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content. Take care, everybody.